Hello appraisers, this is Brandon with Spark for Appraisers and in this video we're going to be covering sensitivity analysis. Now what is sensitivity analysis? Of course you have some information there on your screen which I'll go over in a minute, but basically as it relates to residential real estate appraisers it's a method that we can use to help determine what an adjustment might be that we can use in the sales comparison approach. It's something a lot of us already do in our heads as we're typing up the appraisal, but essentially sensitivity says that the best adjustment to use is the one that results in the smallest range of adjusted values or adjusted prices. So at the bottom of your grid, you have, let's say, six comps. Whatever adjustment you throw into the grid for, let's say, GLA or garage counter, whatever it is, whatever adjustment you put in there, if that's the one that results in your comps getting as close as possible together, then that would be the result from sensitivity. There's, all, of course, other factors that get into play, and just like in my other videos, of course, use other methods, don't just rely on one, but today we're talking about sensitivity, and that's how it works. And just to kind of go off of the definition on your screen up here, at the top on the right side in this PDF, it is based on the theory that the best adjustment to use is the one that results in the smallest range of adjusted sale prices for all of the sales that you're analyzing. And those sales that you're analyzing could be the, the comps in your grid. It could be all the competing properties, not just the comps in your grid. It could be all the single family homes in your defined neighborhood boundaries or all the condos in your defined neighborhood boundaries. However, you think it's appropriate to define that or maybe just use all those sets of data. Use the Use the comps in the grid and separately try it on the competing properties and then separately try it on all the properties in the defined neighborhood boundaries, whatever you think is most appropriate. All right, so what you have on the screen, on your left, you've got a spreadsheet. It's a little table I made here with some examples. And what we're gonna do in this video is I'm going to actually show you how to calculate sensitivity using Excel. So you'll be able to see my formulas, copy it down for yourself if you want to, use it however you want to or not. So I'll give you some examples in this PDF document and then we'll replicate that in Excel so you can actually see how to have it kind of automated for yourself if you wanted to go and make your own spreadsheet to do this. All right, so first let's get into the actual example which is in this PDF. And by the way, this PDF that you're looking at, um, it's you know several pages long and this basically just goes over every method that our adjustment tool uses. Again, this this video, you absolutely do not need to use our adjustment support tool in order to take advantage of this method because I'm going to show you how you can do it by hand, the, the calculations by hand, and how you can do it in Excel. But this little page right here that you see on sensitivity is what we provide in the digital work file for the appraisers that are using our adjustment support tool, just so they can see exactly how it works. Okay. Here's the example. We've got a subject that's 2,000 square feet and we have these sales here. Now I call them comps, probably shouldn't have, should have called them sales because they aren't necessarily comps. They could just be any sale, whatever you deem to be relevant that you want to use. And then these, if you'll notice, are exactly what's over here on the left in this table. Subject 2,000 square feet, subject 2,000 square feet, comp one or sale one, $200,000 with a GLA of 2075. And that's that right there, $200,000 GLA of 2075. All right, so we have these three sales and we are going to test a specific adjustment for GLA. And so in sensitivity, that's what you do. You will test an adjustment, see what the range of adjusted values is, then test another adjustment and see, does that range get larger or smaller? And then try another adjustment. And does the range get larger or smaller? And so on and so on until you test all possible adjustments that you want to try out. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at $75 a square foot as our adjustment. Then we're going to test 80, then 85, then 90. And so what we do is we take the sale price of the first sale. We subtract the adjustment for the difference between the subject and that particular sale. So in this case, sale one is 2,075 square feet. So it's 75 square feet bigger than the subject. So it's 75 square feet times $75 a square foot, which is our test. And 75 times 75 is 5,625. And we just subtract that from the sale price. Because sale one is bigger, we need to adjust downward since the subject is smaller. We need to adjust down to the subject. So that brings it down to 194,375. And then we do the same thing with sale two. Take the sale price, 185, 
subtract the adjustment that we need to make. Now in this case, we're actually adding, so we're subtracting a negative, so we add. Because in this case, sale two is smaller than the subject, so we're gonna be adjusting upward. So it's negative 100 times 75, so negative 7,500, and then we subtract that, which means we're gonna add $7,500 to 185, and we get 192.5. Then do the same thing for sale three. And in the end, we get these three results, or however many, based on however many sales you're analyzing, hopefully more than three, then we get the range by taking the high minus the low, and that gives us the range. And in this case, it's 2250. Then you just repeat that over and over and over again to test every possible adjustment. So now we test $80 a square foot, same thing, we plug in the 80, we get the high and the low, we get the range, it's $1,000, 194 minus 193, then we test 85, that gave us a range of only $375, then we test 90, and that gave us a range of $1,500. And so in this case, hopefully you can guess that the result from sensitivity would be $85 a square foot, which you can see right here, since it resulted in the smallest range. Now, there could be an actual better adjustment to use based on sensitivity, because I actually didn't go very far down. I might want to go try 70, then 65, then 60, then 55, then 50, and so on, and go all the way down to zero, but I didn't in this case for this example. That's something we'd want to do, because there might be something that had a, a range smaller than 375. Now, keep in mind, this is just an example, so in this case, $85 a square foot as a GLA adjustment for properties they're selling for... $97 a square foot is a really high adjustment, so it's probably not a reasonable one. In this case, if sensitivity told me to use 85, I might think, well, that's not really a reasonable adjustment, so I'm going to just not really give that much weight and go look at some other methods. So anyways, that's how that works. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to get into Excel and show you how you can calculate this right here. Okay, and real quick, before I actually get into the formulas, I just want to show you one thing. If you do happen to be using our adjustment support tool, the way it is going to calculate sensitivity is it's going to start by testing zero. So if you remember from the PDF, you test a number, then you test another number, and another number, and another number. So our tool will start at zero. It'll test that out and get the range for that. Then it will go up. So in the case of GLA, then it will try $1 a square foot, then $2, then $3, then $4, and so on until it tests up to the absolute max number. And the same thing for, let's just say swimming pool as an example. So if we're trying to determine the adjustment for a swimming pool based on sensitivity, it would try zero and then work its way up to the theoretical max, just like it would for GLA. Now, the difference between the theoretical max for a swimming pool versus the theoretical max for GLA is right here. And I'll explain a little bit what that is, just so you understand how the tool works. The max number is the theoretical max based on the average sale price of the properties you're calculating the results on. In this case, we have only three sales and the average sale price is 197 right here. So you cannot possibly have a swimming pool adjustment more than $197,000 because that would be greater than the sale price of the actual properties themselves. And then the same thing with GLA, only slightly different because it with GLA, you're not dealing with a quantity of one, you're dealing with a quantity of many. So in this case, we have the average price per square foot of $97. And that would be our max because we can't have a GLA adjustment greater than the actual sale price of these properties. Um, if we had a GLA adjustment of $150, that would just not make any sense. So that would be the max that our adjustment tool would go up to, and then it would stop calculating and give you the results. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and actually get into showing you how this works. Let's go ahead and let's just say we're going to try out these adjustments. Let's do 50. 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, and we'll stop at 90. All right, and then what we'll do is we'll say, okay, this is gonna be, whoops, sale one, sale two, sale three. And then down here, we'll have a low, a high, and a range. All right, so now we just gotta create the formula. So in Excel, you put an equal sign to let it know you're typing in a formula and then you pick the fields that you want to use in the calculation. So what we're going to do is pretty much exactly what it said in that PDF. So we're going to take the sale price of the first sale. We're going to subtract. I'm going to use two parentheses here, and you'll see why in a second. We're going to subtract the 
GLA of the sale, uh, and then we'll subtract the GLA of the subject from the GLA of the sale. And then we take that result, which is in red parentheses here, and multiply it by the adjustment that we're testing, which in this case is $50. And then we close the final parenthesis there. So that's why we use two. It's the $200,000 minus the adjustment. And the adjustment is the difference in the feature times the adjustment that we're testing for that feature. So we hit enter and that's our number. And now there's a couple things I want to do to make this a little easier. If you're not super familiar with Excel, I'm just going to let you know. When you type a dollar sign in front of one of these letters or numbers that represent the field. So just to let you know, C8, that is, this is C, this is 8. So that's this blue field. And Excel shows you, it highlights, it has a background of blue, and the C8 up here is in blue. So you know exactly what's related to what. When you type a dollar sign, it's basically telling Excel that when you copy and paste that field, you want that letter or number to remain identical and not to change. And so what I'm going to do is, because we want always to use the sale price from column C, so I'm going, I'm going to copy, or I'm sorry, I'm going to put the dollar sign in front of that. Now the 8 we want to change because we're going to do sale 2 and sale 3, so we're not going to put a dollar sign there. We'll put a dollar sign in front of D, and we'll put a dollar sign in front of D, and we're also going to put, so for this one, D7, if you notice, that's the purple one. That re represents the subject's GLA. We don't want to ever look at another field for that. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of both the D and the 7. Then I'm going to put a dollar sign, let's see, B12. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the 12. Because we are going to test 55, 60, 65. So we want this B to move but we don't want that 12 to move. We always want the adjustment that we're testing to come from row 12. Hopefully that made sense. Either way, you can take a second and copy that down if you want to. And there we go, 196,250. And now here, watch this, so I can go down. And now it just calculated that same thing for sale two and sale three. But now, if you remember, those are our adjusted prices. And now we want to calculate the low and the highs so that we can get the range. And so in Excel, we'll type equals. And then in Excel, you type min. And it tells you right there, returns the smallest number in a set of values. Parentheses, and then I'm just going to highlight the three close parentheses, and we're done. So that's the minimum. And now we'll do the max. So we do equals max, highlight those three, boom. And now we're going to do the range. And like I said before, the range is simply the high minus the low. And there we go. All right, so now we have that all set. And so this part's kind of the easy, cool part. You just highlight them all, and you have this little box at the bottom right, and you can drag that across to calculate everything. And there we go. That's it. So now I'm going to bold this just so it sticks out, and maybe we'll um, make that a little bit larger for fun. Okay. These are the results, and the one that's the lowest number here is the one that would be the result or the answer based on the sensitivity analysis. So again, it's $85 a square foot. That is the one that wins, essentially, and that would be our result. Now again, always verify you're the expert in the area. You know what's reasonable and what's not reasonable. In this case, in this example, I would say $85 is not a reasonable number to use for properties that are selling at $96 a square foot. But this is only three sales and it's also made up numbers. So I probably just did a bad job of making them up. So hopefully you usually get better numbers from sensitivity that are more reasonable and realistic. Uh, it tends to work pretty well for most appraisers. But in this case, we got a number that I would say, yeah, 85 bucks. It, Depending on the neighborhood or market, this is probably not something that I would use for properties that are selling for less than $100 a square foot. Okay, that's it. That's how it works. I One more time, I will just pop up that PDF in case, in case it helps you there to see the actual calculations. And I will also highlight the formula in case you want to see that formula there. Now, obviously, this formula is assuming in your spreadsheet that you use these exact same cells, and you're obviously not going to do that. Hopefully, you'll have a lot more sales that you can load in there. But 
it's easy to modify how you want to. Just change these to be whatever they should be. Doing it in Excel like this actually makes it pretty quick and easy, depending on what you're doing. All right. One last thing before I let you go, if you do have any interest in getting notified about videos like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. These videos aren't monetized or anything. We don't make money on these, but that subscribe button just makes it so that you would get notified whenever we make a new video. All right. Thanks again, everybody, for watching, and we will talk to you in the next one.